Welcome to First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. I am Pastor Sue Collar. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Christmas. This Sunday, we bring you worship courtesy of the student ministry at the Ukirk Greensboro, which is a college ministry of the Presbyterian Church USA. This is an opportunity we have to support and encourage upcoming leaders in the church who are leading us in worship today. So I hope you uh, offer up prayers for them as they lead worship. These are the people who will be elders and deacons in our churches, the people who will be ushering, the people who will be out serving in Christ's name. And it is wonderful that they've taken the time to put this service together for us. There is going to be communion during this worship service, and so we invite you to have whatever bread or drink is common in your household available for communion. As Presbyterians, we do not believe that the bread and cup, the specific elements for that, are magic. Jesus used the common elements of his day, and we do the same here. So whether it's an Oreo cookie or unleavened bread or grape juice or wine or water, uh, whatever you wish to use for communion, I encourage you to get that ready for when we celebrate this later during the service. And don't worry about whether or not you're a member of this church. Communion here is open to everyone, members and friends, young and old, whether you fully understand what happens in communion or you're still trying to figure it out. You are welcome at this table. One note about something coming up, I'd like you all to put down on your calendars January 17th, 9.30 a.m. That's a Sunday, and we're going to have a congregational meeting to elect elders and deacons. Now, because of the pandemic, we will be holding the meeting over Zoom, and you will be able to connect either by your computer or tablet, smartphone, or regular telephone. We'll be sending out information, including in a letter, about how you can access the meeting that day. And our hope is you will not only come on for our congregational meeting, but stay on for our Zoom communion service at 10 o'clock that morning. So again, welcome to worship. Let us worship God. Welcome to virtual U Kirk Sunday with U Kirk Greensboro. Merry Christmas. We are so excited to worship with you today. Good morning, my name is Reverend Katie Barrett Todd and I am the Executive Director and Campus Minister of Ukirk Greensboro. Before we begin our service this morning, I'd love to take a moment to introduce you to Ukirk Greensboro. We are a PCUSA ministry to college students at colleges and universities in and around Greensboro, North Carolina. Currently, we are reaching and serving students at five schools, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, Guilford College, Randolph Community College, Guilford Technical Community College, and Sandhills Community College. Ukirk Greensboro also has a residential ministry in our Presbyterian Holderness House, which is located near two of our campuses. Ukirk Greensboro has been a mission of Salem Presbytery for more than 60 years. For today's worship service, we are sharing with you some of the talents of our current students, as well as our resident coordinator. Each participant has planned and recorded their pieces in their own homes during their Christmas break in quarantine. Now, along with spoken liturgy pieces, you will experience a children's message written from some of our education majors, a piano prelude and postlude, some hymns led by one of our university chorale singers, some more hymns led a cappella by other students, a reflection poem performed by one of our acting majors. It is our delight and joy to worship God with you this Christmas morning through the sharing of our time, talents, and gifts. May the Holy Spirit fill you with joy and wonder. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
We begin our time of worship joining our heads and hearts in prayer with our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Triune God of love and light, dwell among us as we gather to worship you. Shine your light into our life. Fill our hearts with your overflowing love. Accept our offering of prayer and praise. May we truly see you in this place. Amen. Let us turn together in calling ourselves to worship using the words of the responsive call to worship. They will be available on the screen. Let us worship together. Praise God, the Creator, who made the heavens and the earth. We celebrate in awe of God's beautiful creation. Praise God, the Redeemer, who came in flesh to live among us. We gather in awe of God's coming to us. Praise God, the Spirit, who fill us with hope. We follow in all, sustain for the journey. Praise God, one in three and three in one. We worship in awe of God's merciful love. sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy no more let sin and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground he comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found far as the curse is found far as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders one. Because we know that unlike anyone else, God will never turn us away, we gather together to admit where we could do better. Let us now confess our sins together using the unison prayer of confession. The words are available on the screen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through your child, we have become your children. Too often, we reject this identity. We turn away from the guidance you offer and the unconditional love you have for us. Rather than trusting you, we follow our ideas and plans. Instead of caring for all of your children, we seek our advancement instead. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us to trust and to return to your loving arms. Amen. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. Through Jesus the Christ we are forgiven and freed. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. Through him may we find peace. The peace of Christ is not an easy peace, but a peace that comes through deep truth. Nevertheless, the peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. We would also like to take this moment to teach you the peace in American Sign Language. Peace be with you and also with you.
Hi friends! Hello, hello! My name is Caitlin. I hope you guys have had a lovely Christmas holiday. Today I'm here with you to read our book called All the Colors of Christmas. Now, before we start, I want you to think about your favorite color. Got it? I've got mine. Let's see if yours is in our book and what it might represent. All the Colors of Christmas by Matthew Paul Turner, illustrated by Gillian Gamble. Christmas is red. It's a shiny new sled. It's candy canes and toy store lanes. It's sprinkles on sweet bread. It's packages with bows and Rudolph's bright red nose. It's pictures drawn in dressed up lawns. It's warm mittens when it snows. It's the drummer boy's drum, his pa rum pa pum pum. It's Santa Claus and cranberry sauce. It's apples, pears, and plums. It's presents that we send to family and friends. It's jolly cards and merry hearts. Yes, Christmas is red. Christmas is green. It's an evergreen scene. It's holly, sprigs, and mistletoe twigs. It's emerald lights agleam. It's garland on rails and pine needle trails. It's winter boots and funny elf suits. It's that old Mr. Grinch tale. It's Granny Smith pies and plaid bow ties. It's fresh pot pourri that smells Christmassy. It's stockings hung high. It's tinsel on trees and grass iced by freeze. It's Christmas tree balls and artwork on walls. Yes, Christmas is green. Christmas is gold. It's bright ribbon unrolled. It's jingling bells and warm, yummy smells. It's heirlooms you are not allowed to hold. It's dancers all tapping among holiday trappings. It's nutcracker crowns and Christmas Eve gowns. It's glittery gift wrapping. It's a big turkey roast and walnuts you toast. It's crackling fires and glorious choirs. It's an ornament you love most. It's kids shouting, behold, wearing halos and robes. It's trees top stars and old church bazaars. Yes, Christmas is gold. Christmas is blue. It's a winter sky's hue. It's flannel sheets and shaped cookie treats. It's a lake frozen through. It's big puffy coats and huge parade floats. It's juniper trees and blue spruce wreaths. It's writing Santa notes. It's a sweater mama knit, stretched yet still fits. It's turquoise lights in the darkest of nights. It's a snowman's outfit. It's memories old and new of loved ones gone too soon. It's an Elvis song and nights growing long. Yes. Christmas is blue. Christmas is white. It's warm candlelight. It's mountain tops and small fancy shops. It's turtle doves in flight. It's December snowstorms and blankets so warm. It's angel wings and the song that we sing about our dream for Christmas morn. It's sleigh rides through snow and tea lights that glow. It's North Pole tales and frosty exhales. It's cocoa with marshmallows. It's a star shining bright on the holiest of nights. It's powdered cakes and paper snowflakes. Yes, Christmas is white. Christmas is brown. It's pine cones scattered around. It's caramel corn and copper French horns. It's winter's frozen ground. It's firewood piled high and reindeer that fly. It's cinnamon sweets and gingerbread treats. 
It's homemade pecan pie. It's a cradle soft with hay and a donkey's gentle bray. It's God within a baby's skin on that very first Christmas day. It's shepherds kneeling down and wise ones gathered round. It's Mary's sigh and Jesus' cry. Yes, Christmas is brown. Christmas is you. It's your own unique hue. It's your wondrous gleam in your bedtime dreams. You color each Christmas anew. It's your tinsel and flair and the gifts that you share. It's your jingling smile and your fa-la-la style. It's how you love and how you care. It's the songs that you sing and the light that you bring. It's your heartfelt compassion and your hope put in action. It's your thrill for the little things. It's your love for what's true. It's the good that you do. You're a part of the story, the joy, and the glory. Yes, Christmas is you. The end. Hi, everybody. How's it going? My name's Lane. I'm new to the Greensboro area. I'm super excited to be here with you guys and share this Christmas service. So I brought along two of my friends and two of my favorite colors of Christmas, and that's gold and brown. And these two are two that I think of when I come home for Christmas and two of my favorite colors of Christmas. This one is Maisie and this one is Brooklyn and they're being very good girls right now sitting down for me. Yes, you are. I just wanted to make sure you guys are here to remember that the Christmas colors are what you make of it, but the most, the most important color is what Jesus makes of it. And I hope that you guys have a great Christmas and enjoy everything. Please stay safe so that we can see each other in person. I can't wait to meet some of you guys in person. And let's pray before we move on. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this day that you've given us and for uh, letting us be here to celebrate Christmas and find new ways to share Christmas with those around us and even people that we haven't met. Um, and we just hope that everything that this Christmas season goes well and that we move into our next, the next year of our lives in a, in a safe way. And now uh, we thank you for everything that you've blessed us with. And uh, we hope that you bless others the way you bless us. Amen. Bye, everybody. Love has come, a light in the darkness. Love shines forth in a Bethlehem skies. See, all heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how their song of joy arises. Love, love, born unto you. Our first scripture reading comes to us from Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 through chapter 62 verse 2. Let us hear now the word. I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God, because he has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in a robe of righteousness like a bridegroom in a priestly crown, and like a bride adorned in jewelry. As the earth puts out its growth, and as a garden grows its seeds, so the Lord God will grow righteousness and praise before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I won't keep silent. 
and for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still until her righteousness shines out like a light, and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You will be called a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Our next scripture reading comes to us from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 38. Let us hear now the word. When the time came for their ritual cleansing in accordance with the law from Moses, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, you let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that generates opposition, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshiped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Our next scripture reading comes to us from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Let us hear now the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was with God in the beginning, everything came into being through the word, and without the word nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of the Father's only Son. Full of grace and truth, John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I have whom said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who was at the Father's side, has made God known. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Light of the world, your good news is for all people. In today's readings and proclamation, attune our ears to hear your life-giving word. Open our hearts to receive your blessing that we may bear your light in our lives, giving witness to your glory and strength. Amen. Around December of 1996, then second year college student Allie Smith of Greensboro came home for Christmas 
and told her parents that she had seen some Christmas light balls and they needed to recreate them for their front yard. That was the year the Sunset Hills Christmas ball tradition began. NBC's Today Show has shared the story a few times over the years, each time highlighting footage of colored lights piercing the darkness of leafless trees on a winter night. What started as one family wrapping balls of chicken wire in colorful Christmas lights and throwing them in the tallest trees has spread to an annual must-see event where hundreds of families light the sky with tens of thousands of lights. It's almost magical to see, and driving through the Sunset Hills balls each December has become a tradition in my family. We move from preparing for the birth of Christ to witnessing Christ at work in the world this week, and we are invited to be a part of that work in new ways. Each scripture for us this week helps us to recognize who we are through Christ, empowers us to respond to God's love, and re-engage the world as God's capable and beloved church. Isaiah begins with a focus on the redemptions bestowed upon us by God. By speaking of the garments and jewels adorning a bride and a groom, these are not gifts that are innate, but are given by the grace of God. The imagery of a shoot in a garden helps us to understand that our redemption is not a one and done act of God, but a carefully nurtured and cultivated process. This is perhaps a theological pivot for the people of Israel to realize that their salvation from their current plight is not immediate and that the work of proclaiming and praising the name of God is not finished in an instant. The writer describes a new name that is not mentioned, but seems directly related to the circumstance of the people rather than an actual name being given. As such, it is not a far leap to conclude that we all can be renamed in our circumstance, that Christ is the breaker of preconceived notions, stereotypes, biases, and prejudices once used to identify a person or a group of people. Now, in our Luke text, the story of Jesus' circumcision and naming in the temple include the prophetic voices of Simeon and Anna. Their declarations further affirm Mary and Joseph's understanding of who the child is and will be, not just for the redemption of Jerusalem, but for the salvation of all people. We have concluded a month of Advent, a month of Advent preparation for the arrival of Christ, with this recent celebration of his birth in what seems like quick fashion. So quick, in fact, that we can lose sight of the meaning of the Messiah. These scripture texts reaffirm for us the power of Christ's redemptive work that began at creation and was made manifest in his birth. In her commentary on the passage from John 1, Reverend Lindsay Wade reminds us that, quote, John doesn't dwell in the specifics, Mary, angels, shepherds, and so on. Because for this gospel writer, all we need to know is that somehow the word becomes flesh and becomes a part of our world in a new and tangible way through Jesus of Nazareth. The writer goes on to connect the event of God breaking into our world with our relationship with God. Because the word has become human, we can recognize and respond to God in entirely new ways. End quote. Now, I love Dr. Will Gaffney's take on the intersection of the creation story and the Christmas story from John. She spends time reminding us that John and Jesus were cousins, so John knew a very different version of Jesus than we do or than the public did. Dr. Gaffney says this, quote, John looked back at the world's birth story and saw a different trinity. The word, light and life, had been present at the dawn of creation and were present in the man he knew as Jesus, the man he'd grown up with, played with, and perhaps fought with, his cousin. 
She continues saying, John is telling us who Jesus is, and for him, the manger story doesn't cut it. It's not big enough. It's not grand enough. Jesus is nothing less than the Word of God in human flesh, the Word that spoke creation into being, the promise and promises of God, the teachings, judgments, warnings, and revelation of God, all in a mortal human body. Jesus is the eternal light from the dawn of creation that shines in the darkness and no matter how long or how deep the shadows can never be extinguished. And Jesus is life itself and life that transcends death. John's Jesus is the place where earth and heaven meet." End quote. While driving through the sunset hills is magical and moving, What's more moving is the mission that has arisen out of a simple Christmas light. Quote, one out of six people in the Piedmont triad is food insecure, end quote, says one interviewee. And that was in 2015. An annual event of light has turned into a food collection to benefit Second Harvest Food Bank. And just about a decade ago, the running of the balls was created to further support the food banks and fight food insecurity in the area. The running of the balls is a nighttime 5K road race and walk through the Sunset Hills area where bands and choral groups line the course and participants earn a cup of hot cocoa at the end. Jonathan Smith, the brother of Allie, says in an interview that, quote, our hope is that wherever they are, folks are making it about more than just pretty lights, shining a light on hunger, loneliness, community, end quote. These words are particularly potent in a year filled with loneliness, lack of community, and starvation for food and company. Simeon and Anna declared Christ's birth a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for God's people Israel. Isaiah's writer proclaims, I won't keep silent and for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still until her righteousness shines out like a light. And then John reminds us that the incarnation, the presence of Emmanuel, God with us is wrapped in light in the middle of darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. In speaking of Advent, Reverend Dr. Caroline Lewis once preached, quote, Maybe preparation means simply adjusting our eyes to see light when there seems to be none. So if preparation means adjusting our eyes to see light when it seems absent, I believe that Christmas means re-engaging the light and responding to the light. The year 2020 was supposed to be a year of hope and promise, and yet it's been a year of grief and loss. Everything has changed. We don't see the bottom half of our friends' faces anymore due to mask wearing. We keep a distance when we want so badly to hug or high five. And we gather around our coffee table to celebrate the Lord's Supper and computer screens for singing Christmas hymns in worship. And yet, at the end of this year, this year where first-year college students never stepped foot onto campuses and we celebrate the lives of saints lost over Zoom and Facebook Live, there is still fleeting hope. We have a vaccine to this dreaded virus. We are worshiping together with congregations across the country that we would never have dreamed of connecting to, all because some college students in North Carolina decided to put together a worship service. And we are still celebrating the birth of our Savior who dared to step into a world of dark and loss and grief to bring light and love and restoration and truth. We use night lights and flashlights and colored lights on chicken wire balls to keep us from experiencing darkness. We are afraid of the dark. But as Dr. Gaffney points out, quote, God is not. Darkness is a creative space to God. Out of darkness, God created everything that is, including 
light, end quote. And present in that creation from the very beginning was the light that came into the world in and through Jesus Christ. Where we see dark, God sees varying degrees of light, shadow, if you will. Gaffney continues saying, quote, We are called to a mature faith in a complex world. There is light and dark, shadow, and more than 50 shades of gray. The darkness and light coexist. There is always shadow. We can't see in the dark. We trip over the smallest thing. But it is not the dark that hurts us. It is our own limitations. Because of our blindness, Christ lights our way. Christ is the light that allows us to see the light in all people and all situations. The world is filled with shadow. We have seen those shadows recently." End quote. This Christmas, may we live with the excitement of Simeon and Anna, not giving up until we recognize the light of the world. This Christmas, may we live with the determination of Isaiah, re-engaging the light by not being silent, until the light brings restoration. And this Christmas, may we live like John, responding to the world's cries for light by pointing to the true light. In the middle of this flurry of Christmas, we each are called to introspection as we work to make visible the kingdom of God in response to the God who claims us as God's own. Isaiah and Simeon and Anna and John remind us that God's gift of Christ is love. And this love is good news. And this love is for everyone. How can recognizing this love allow us to re-engage the world as individuals and respond as communities of faith? What began as a love of unique Christmas lights by a college student two and a half decades ago has grown into the largest food insecurity fighting event in the Piedmont Triad area. Neighbors recognized a need and responded, resulting in more than 3 million meals being provided through the local food bank. And similar events have spread to communities across the country like Port Huron, Michigan and Morgantown, West Virginia. Talk about light in the darkness. What is God calling you to recognize about the light? How is God calling you to re-engage the light? And how are you responding? Pray with me. Energizing God, you know there are times like now when we are tired and uncertain, when we doubt that we can do your work in this world. As we approach a new year, Help us recognize and embrace your love for us so we have what we need to re-engage the world that you love so much. Amen. If you close your eyes and awaken your awareness, if you inhale deeply and let that breath fill every part of your being, if you allow yourself to sit with the question really and truly as if taking it out for tea, it will inhabit you. It will enliven you. It will call you by name, and you will know what I am talking about. You will be familiar with the question because it keeps making itself familiar to you. It is that question that keeps rising again, inside your being, like an enormous beckoning moon, and the mysterious tide she constantly summons. Yes, listen. Stand on the shore of the horizon and welcome the question revealed in the waves of longing, lingering, dreaming. The idea that keeps returning, that love that keeps emerging, that path that keeps arriving. Listen, in the swell of the waves, there it is, won't you? It sounds for you, won't you? Hear it resound and expand, won't you choose that which is choosing you? Having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us together affirm our faith using words adapted from the Scots Confession. Friends, what do you believe? We confess and acknowledge one God alone, to whom alone we must cleave. 
whom alone we must serve, whom alone we must worship, and whom alone we put our trust, who is eternal, infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, omnipotent, invisible, one in substance and yet distinct in three persons, creator, redeemer, and the sustainer, by whom we confess and believe all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, to have been created, to be retained in their being, and to be ruled and guided by his inscrutable providence, for such end as his internal wisdom, goodness, and justice have appointed, and to the manifestation of his own glory. When the fullness of time came, God sent his Son, his eternal wisdom, the substance of his own glory, into this world, who took the nature of humanity from the substance of a woman, a virgin, by means of the Holy Spirit. And so was born the just seed of David, and the angel of the great counsel of God, the very Messiah promised, whom we confess and acknowledge to be Emmanuel, true God and true humanity, two perfect natures united and joined into one person. Love has come. Love is here. Love is love here at this table, where Christ invites us to see and smell and taste love. This table is set for us, for all who believe in Jesus Christ, and we are invited. So come, join God at the feast of love. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give God thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And we continue together praying, God of Christmas, we celebrate the birth of hope, a hope that ignites us to action and recreation and reimagination, reshaping ourselves and the whole world into the image of God's kingdom. We celebrate the birth of peace, a peace that engages brokenness, a peace that eclipses war, a peace that breaks down the walls of oppression and hate. We celebrate the birth of joy, a joy that reinvigorates our desire to rejoice in God, who creates all things. A joy that encourages us to lift up the positive and bridges the separation of the world. We celebrate the birth of love, a love that transcends all things. A love that looks at a person's skin color, creed, nationality, and gender, and sees only beauty, uniqueness, and the diversity of God's creation. A love that empowers us to embrace the other, the least of these, and the oppressed. We celebrate the birth of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. We remember his living, dying, and rising for the forgiveness of sin. We give thanks for the gift of his life and the power of his resurrection. We give thanks that through the power of the Holy Spirit, these elements of bread and fruit of the vine may be for us the body and blood of Jesus broken for the forgiveness of our individual and collective sin. May we be fed both spiritually and physically for the journey ahead as we go out into the world to share the good news of God's great love. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered around a table much like this with his friends. And after they ate, he took bread. And he gave thanks to God, and he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God for it, he blessed it and poured it out, and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, remembering me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, come to the feast of love. Christ has set the table. The feast is prepared for you.
Now is a time when we have the privilege of coming before God to offer the prayer of our hearts and minds and community. Take a moment to consider all for whom you might pray this day. Let us pray. God of light and darkness, our world needs your presence. We, your people, long to experience you in all our being, with all our senses. Shine your light in us, O God, that we might shine for others. Help us not to stay focused on the infant Jesus in the manger or the temple. Help us instead to hear the message of the living Christ, who calls us to discipleship. Shine your light in us, O God, that we might shine for others. By your Spirit, guide us to take the message of unconditional love and share it with all the world, especially those who are in need, hurting, and disillusioned, who have given up. Shine your light in us, O God, that we might shine for others. This we pray in the name of the Christ who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Giving requires us to place something in the hands of someone else. When we give an offering, we place what we have into God's loving hands. Knowing this, we are asked to give freely, out of love, just as God did when we were given Jesus Christ at Christmas. God gave out of love, and so shall we. During this time, you are encouraged to give your offering as you typically would to your congregation. This is an offering of gifts, of self, of service, of prayer, of time, of resources, of talents. Should you feel moved to support the mission of Ukirk Greensboro, a PCUSA ministry to college students, you may do so online or by mail. The addresses are on your screen. Now, let us give our offerings to God this Christmas morning in gratitude for all that we have been given. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No
Sing praises to our heavenly Lord that hath made heaven and earth of naught, and with his blood mankind hath brought no well, no Let us pray. Gracious God, you love abundantly and provide generously. In gratitude, we give our gifts back to you. May these offerings, our time, money, energy, and prayers, nurture and support your children and represent to all what a joy it is to be counted among your family. Use us and these gifts to your glory. Amen. The world awaits the gift of love. The world awaits the gift of grace and forgiveness. The world awaits the gift of friendship and peace. The world needs help recognizing the light. You possess each of these gifts and God charges you to use them to spread about to all whom you encounter. Do so with hope, peace, joy, and love. Go. And know that God's Spirit has gone before you, gifting the people of the earth with love and grace and peace. Merry Christmas.
Thanks for joining us at First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. Find out more about us at fpclincoln.org or find us on Facebook.